Hello, dwarfs and dwarfettes. This is Jury Duty Summons. And today, I wanted to show you guys everything I know about tasks and tasking and how dwarves know what they're supposed to do and when they're supposed to do it. And so I just recently got a migration. So there we go. Some migrants have arrived. That'll show up in the log and it'll show up at the bottom of the screen. And so every season you have a chance for more dwarves to come. And that's kind of affected by the by the worth of the uh, of the fortress and all things like that. Um, and so, let me see, did they make it yet? Uh, I think they have. I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm going to pause it here. All right, so uh, the first thing we want to see is V to look up the, um, what does V stand for? View unit, okay? And that's a dog. We don't care about that. All right, there we go. So we'll look at this dwarf since it was handy. And you can see this is the screen that it usually comes up on. And this will show you what job the dwarf has, what they're doing, or even not even just dwarves, anything really. Um, and you see, and it shows on the right hand side there what skills they have. And so you can see this dwarf here, uh, Sitnaul. I probably pronounced that wrong. I apologize. You can see that his skills are professional miner, adequate appraiser, dabbling persuader, a few things like that. And uh, let's turn off all of the uh, other things. So turn off miscellaneous. So those are the those are the jobs that kind of matter for 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 the most part. The other ones are social skills, which help, but as a as a miner, it's not really a big deal. As an expedition leader, it helps. Hmm, excuse me. Anyway, um, so from here, if you want to see what what tasks they have assigned, which is different than skills, you can bring up uh, P for preference, and then L for labor, and this shows what jobs, what tasks they will try to do when the task becomes available. And so for right now, mining, if anything is designated to mine, this guy will try going to mine. And under healthcare, every dwarf has feed patients and recover wounded. Those are always on for every dwarf, which is fine. And hauling is on for every dwarf uh, by default. I think he doesn't have anything else. Uh, cleaning. I don't, dwarfs don't seem to clean very often, but I guess it's there. Picking up trash, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, those are the jobs. And you can turn them on and off. So under... Um, Start working, we can turn on masonry if we wanted to. And, uh, yeah, that's where all that's at. Fishing, farming, or, yeah, farming related, fishing related, metal crafting, jewelry, etc. And so, um, you can, you can manage the dwarves one by one by doing this. And it's, it's a bit, um, it's a bit tedious to go through all the dwarves because you've got to find them and you've got to change the things. At, at six dwarves, you know, it's not a big deal, but we just got three more, so we're at nine dwarves at this point. And so it's still doable, but it's it's really quite tedious. And so there is a better way of doing it. And so let me show you that. So here is the Lazy New Pack uh, controller here. Under Utilities, there is a utility called Dwarf Therapist. This thing is the complete control over all jobs. It is an excellent tool. I'd essentially, you, it, it's essentially impossible to play a fortress larger than maybe 20 dwarfs without dwarf therapists. Well, maybe not, maybe not impossible, but completely impractical. All right. So you'd launch it from the Lazy New Pack, and let's bring that up here. I already have it going. There we go. All right. So you can see up top, you have a all the different jobs in the game. Ta-da. So those are all the different tasks they have. The cells that are highlighted are the jobs, are, are the jobs that that dwarf is willing to do. All right, and uh, it even shows the nicknames. You can sort it by any column you want. So if you have a bunch of dwarfs and you want to see which ones are the masons, you can just click right at the top there, and it sorts by that column. So that's pretty handy. Uh, another thing I really like is if you right click in this big area here, you can sort by different category, by different um, special things. So sort by game order. This is the order it shows up in different searches and menus. Um, I like to do order ascending. I believe game order is or ID ascending, um, but maybe not. But anyway, the ID ascending puts them in the order in which they've arrived at your fortress. So these are our six originals, and these are the ones that just came in on the wave. You can see our originals are quite happy, apparently, since we've done such a great job with them, I guess. <laughs> good food and a uh, good place to sleep, and no one, not many people, well, only one person has died, so that's a good sign. 
So anyway, let's see what these dwarves can do. Currently, this one is a great fish cleaner. <laughs> um, since we're not quite going to do any fishing for now, and we don't really need a really high-skilled fish cleaner, which is kind of sad, so I'm going to turn that labor off, so he's not going to clean any fish. And um, this guy here is a good fisherman. It is probably, since we have alligators in that river, it's probably a good idea we're going to turn that off for now. We're not going to rely upon fishing for this uh, fort's food. So we'll turn off all of this labor for for these guys. Um, I don't know why we got them, but it is what it is. And so what else do we have here? Uh, siege engineering. I could live without it, you know, but siege engineering is important if, um, if you want to build a ballista or you know some of the high-end siege stuff. Let's see here. Well, he is a crossbow maker, which is kind of nice. I guess we'll enable that in case we have to. And this guy is a miner. That's why we got the pick. It's because it's, it belongs to this guy. For some reason, the labor wasn't enabled. Okay. So now that we've made some changes, they're going to show up under pending labor changes. So you can see what we've done here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go up here and hit to uh, commit pending changes or over down here, commit changes. And so if you decided you didn't like them, you can actually hit ch clear changes instead. And so it's a, a really cool program. As you can see, if you're, at, if you're at 140 dwarves, trying to control them, you know, find the dwarf or go through units and just find out which one, it's a big pain in the butt. Oh, a, a neat, another neat little trick is if you right-click on the on the dwarf, you can do things like um, set the nickname here. You can do all you know, pull up the the detailed information about the dwarf. There are different skills and the traits. Uh, he's a thrill seeker, apparently, so that's good. <laughs> all right, there you go, and that is dwarf therapist. And so we've committed those changes. Let's um, there we go. That's pretty much all I wanted to show this episode. I did make a uh, little change here. I built some bedrooms. Um, I I like to do that. Let's just, I'll just show you how to do it. So I hit B for build, B for bed. Put a bed down. Hit uh, D for door. Bam. There we go. And so the dwarves will come and bring that stuff over there because they all have the hauling labor. And so, yeah, as soon as I put down the bed, that created a task. Uh, waiting for waiting for a job or sorry that created a task in the task queue for any dwarf with the hauling labor for furniture hauling to come and complete that task and so the same thing happens over here at the mason workshop if i say i want a let's say um, a statue built that creates a task for any dwarf with masonry and the same with the carpenter workshop so that's how that works and um, to make the bedroom work you just go into Q to change the um, properties, building properties. And R for make bedroom. Change the size so it's the full room. Enter. And there you go. You have an active bedroom. And on a side note, you don't actually have to assign these to the dwarves. Dwarves will find an available bedroom and then claim it. So you don't have to go and assign these manually. I know there are some people out there who were doing that. And I'm, I'm sure that was probably really tedious. <laughs> so anyway, oh, there's the dwarf. He's finishing his job. And there we go. We have another bedroom built. All right, and so that's um, ten bedrooms. That's plenty for now. It's actually one more than we need. Uh, what else? Our farm is doing great. We got a bunch of plump helmets. We got the still finished, and the kitchen finished. We the the farmer, the farmer uh, is also a cook. But I don't want. I'm not going to have him be dedicated cook. So I think I'll assign one of these. Let's see here. So we'll turn that labor off. And this guy who cleans fish will be. Yeah, I think he'll like being a cook part time. <laughs> so we'll commit those changes. There we go. We'll make a, uh, a lavish meal for the dwarves and see what happens. Uh, hey, dwarf. Where you at? Come make, come make something for me. 
There we go. Oh, no, that's the farmer. He's still planting seeds. Come on. All right, so he's going to grab some plump helmets. Lots of plump helmets. <laughs> All right, so we'll see it in the building. So, yeah, he's grabbed um, a good 13 mushrooms. That's going to be a very mushroomy dish he's building. Let's see. Come on, finish. Finish, dwarf, finish. Cook that plump helmets. Oh, there he goes. And so there we go. We have a plump helmet roast. How delicious. Dwarves actually prefer to eat cooked food, and so they'll get happy thoughts from that. Uh, uncooked food or just raw ingredients, it's better than nothing, but or it's better than rodents. But it's um, it's just kind of mediocre. But they prefer cooked food and good booze. So there we go. If there's any questions, let me know. Have a nice evening, everybody.